this content is for kids. It's not uh, for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill me. Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If you return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. He likes movies, we like movies. Septo Sid versus the world. 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 Greetings! You're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen. This is Kotobuki Jake. And we're here to show you what we got. <laughs> yeah. Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. Oh boy. Well, amazing how technology has allowed us to adapt so that where it was going to be just me doing pickups, thanks to our, our tech. We're able to also get Jake in on the pickups this week. So that's uh, pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Mine is an mm -hmm. all video game pickups. Mm. <clears throat> I don't know why I keep getting them. It's not like I'm going to play them. But <laughs> uh, there were a lot of good deals, and I got a lot of discounts for my birthday, so I ended up getting a whole bunch. And then the limited run order came in, and that mm -hmm. added a whole bunch. So I got seven video games here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with one which was a birthday pickup. Uh, I got a large percentage off for my birthday. I was able to apply a coupon to it. Mm -hmm. So that is Bravery Default 2, which you can't mm. see title because it got cut off by the GameStop pre-owned. And it looks positively gorgeous as a game. I do have the original... I mean, look at that art style in there. I do have the original Bravery Default games, which are for the Nintendo 3DS. So I probably will play those through first before I play these. But I do have it just in case. So that's going to be another reason to revive my 3DS, which has been sitting dead all this time. Uh, not anytime soon, but it will be revived in the nearish future because <clears throat> I'm going to be playing a lot of Dragon Warrior games on it. So, <laughs> But uh, this one, I can get on Switch and play it, so it can still be portable. Good deal. And this time I'll actually give it full, actually, real quick, full screen. There it goes. Now we'll put Jake full screen. Huh. Okay, because we need full screen for this. Well, anyway, um, in, uh, I'm going to be continuing on starting this pickup by continuing on with a few of the, uh, the items that uh, I got from Brandon, courtesy, uh, you know, his old man. Uh, we've still got a few of these to work through. And this one is appropriate because as well, um, I believe last week, uh, Brandon presented for us a little film called Stooge Mania, which <clears throat> we got some uh, <laughs> slight, slight difference of opinions on during our talk, which... Uh, is quite fun. You should check out the. Uh, was that on the main channel or the side channel? That was main the channel. channel wasn't it? The main film, so it's on yeah. Inside Movies Galore. Okay, so check that out. It should be fun. So, in 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 light of that, I have this collection here, which is the Three Stooges 75th Anniversary Collection. It says over four hours of classic comedy. And side A is the four, uh, as I understand it, uh, public domain films, Disorder in the Court, Sing a Song of Six Pants, Bridless Groom, and Malice in the Palace. Am, am I correct? Those are the four? Yeah. 
Okay, and then you've also got another uh, short called The Jerk of All Trades. Um, some live action color classics and a film from 1946 called Swing Parade of 1946 where um, I don't know exactly how big, do you know how big a role they have in the film? I have no clue. Okay. <laughs> Because I know, like, it's a madman, madman world. They get star billing, and yeah. they literally stand there for, like, ten seconds. But anyway, but this one, uh, it also has some Three Stooges cartoons, 15 of them, apparently. So that's some pretty decent amount of stuff there. I'm, I'm looking forward to giving this a go eventually. <laughs> you know, I still have that Ultimate Collection, which is why mm -hmm. I passed up on it. Right. And, uh, you know... I'll send the link over so you can check out. You've, you've seen what it looks like as far as on the outside. Right. But uh, on the inside of that collection, it's got like a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> including, uh, it's like excluding the public domain. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. It would be kind of screwy. But it has like a crap ton of the shorts. It's probably... Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Every short film that they did, mm -hmm. including the so and also bonus material on top of it, which is pretty cool. Right. So, it, it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. And I mean, it looks cool. like it. So. Hmm. Yeah, mostly it looks like they only did two of the full movies, though. <laughs> But then again, the Stooges were known for their shorts more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Bye. All right, so my next game here that I got over GameStop was off their buy two, get one. And this was a little crowdfunded game called Wonderful 101. Hmm. Now, this was originally a Wii U game. And uh, th this is actually one of those two times where a publisher did a crowdfunding to allow it to, to get released. I don't know much about it. I've heard it's kind of silly. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people have really spoken up mm -hmm. about this being like a really great mm. game. So mm. I was curious about it. It was really cheap, especially mm -hmm. with the buy to get one. So yeah, had to, had to go and grab mm -hmm. that. Nice. Um, you actually can, like, you get, like, a whole bunch of, like, these little mini superheroes, and then they can mm -hmm. form, like, objects to crush giant monsters and stuff. Mm -hmm. Stop that, silly. <laughs> so, speaking of silly, um, this seems like an appropriate one to do in reference to this week, because this week we will be... I will be drawing from a comedy favorites collection for Mr. John Candy All for right. The Great Outdoors. So it gave me an excuse to crack this open and start watching. But one of the ones that I got uh, from from his father that uh, or, or from him, you know, uh, that's along those same lines a man known for his comedy in much the same way John Candy was. We have the Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> Comedy Favorites Collection with twins, Kindergarten Cop and Junior. I have to admit, with some reluctance, the only one of these I ever saw was Kindergarten Cop. I never saw the others. <laughs> um... But I'd like to, uh, especially Twins is one that I've heard I need to see. Twins. Okay. Anything with Danny DeVito is usually worth a watch, you know, or at least I like to think that that is true. <laughs> but uh, this is one that, um, this is a nice little set. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed by the bare bones nature of these sets. Like, it would have been nice if Great Outdoors had some bonus material, and it really doesn't. They even misspelled the character's name on the back of the box. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah. 
But anyway, yeah, because it's so easy to misspell Ripley, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it is about time that I got these into the collection. I didn't have any of them. And hopefully this will trigger a watch in the not too distant future of the ones I haven't seen. And when they inevitably come up on movies galore, I'll have a copy ready to watch. <laughs> Junior was a little bit cringeworthy. It always seemed like it would be. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, you know. Yeah, yeah. Still there. Yep. Huh, apparently we are doing this live. I forgot to put this uh, on <laughs> temporarily. Oh, well. This is going to be up there, so it'll be a little bit of a preview. Okay. Um, there will be an edited version coming on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right, so, um, again, uh, well, of course, part of my buy to get one was the other most expensive one of the, of the group which was Biomutant. Hmm. I have heard terrible things about this game, but I really do like THQ Nordic. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting the, to play this game forever. And I'm sure the way that things are these days, they'll come up with some fixes by the time I get to play it to where it will run mm -hmm. smoother. And it still looks very fun. According to things, there is a very environmental centric theme. Hmm. So I think you would like that. <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, pa apparently, some sort of company um, screwed the earth over. This so the mm -hmm. earth screwed people over back. Mm -hmm. And uh, created this other things. And uh, you've got to go in and uh, save the planet because those things that are saving the earth are being destroyed. Hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of fun sounding. There's a lot of cool things that you can do, a lot of humor. So, maybe interesting. Okay. Next up, I'm going to do a twofer. They're they're technically separate, but they're also the the they, they go together nicely. Um, I'm almost sure. Almost sure. I didn't have any of these in the collection, and I don't really know how. One thing that uh, I guess that our, our fathers had in common was a fondness for this particular duo, and that is Cheech and Chong with their yeah. classic film Up in Smoke, and also Nice Dreams, which I never did see this one. I've seen I've seen this one. And um, Early Pee Wee. It's just... Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun to visit these again, or to the first time. And actually, I'm looking at this, and it tell it you know, these would be good choices for the mustache matinee. If we ever get that going, I'm sure Mo will back me on that. Um, <laughs> but it's got it's good fun, good times, you know, good dumb stoner humor, but not always dumb. Like it's. You know, it's, there's some good stuff thrown in there. Cheech Marin, of course, is a pretty solid actor generally, but the two of them together made a fun team. And uh, I look forward to giving these another, uh, giving them another hit. <laughs> yep. Steve's not <right> here, man. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, I think my favorite part in Up in Smoke is when the uh, the cop pulls him over, and he pulls over on the median in the middle of the highway, and he's like, license and register, license, oh, it's on the back of the car, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I went ahead, and the last of my buy to get one, and I think this is mm -hmm. the one I got, the one that was free. Mm -hmm. Was I went ahead and I picked up the Dragon Ball, um, what was it? Oh. Dragon Ball Kakarot, which is the uh, hmm. Dragon Ball Z RPG. Mm -hmm. That supposedly goes through the majority of the stories all the way through to, I think, some of the stuff in Super. Because I've seen some Beerus content. Hmm. So I'm very curious about it. Um, there's definitely DLC, which I need to get to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, uh, again, 
I've been wanting to get it for a while. It was low enough price finally that I said, okay, mm -hmm. I'll get the base game. From what I've heard, the base game has enough to entertain you for quite a bit anyway. Nice. And then I can always upgrade with some of the DLC later down the road. Um, it's It'll be interesting playing it like that. I've played only Fighters with DBZ, so this will be a very different way of playing it. Good deal. All right, so... Speaking of nice dreams, another thing that I got, and this will wrap up for tonight, the stuff that I got for Brandon for, uh, is this nice looking set, Porky's The Ultimate <laughs> Collection. Now, of course, you, our faithful viewers, will know that I recently acquired Porky's from our friend Dane. And it was on Blu-ray, and so technically this is sort of a downgrade. But on the other hand, it's a nice-looking set that includes all three movies. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, Porky's <laughs> doesn't really need to be in high def. Uh, I'd have to check and see what kind of bonus features the other one had. I'll either get rid of it or end up with two copies somehow. But... I couldn't pass this set up. It looks nice. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Uh, again, this was one that <laughs> my old man introduced me to, and I enjoy it. It's not high art by what? any any means, <laughs> but it's good fun. Uh, so, good. Well, let's rephrase that. Good '80s fun for those who don't care about whether it fits today's standards. <laughs> I will tell an interesting story about that. Two of okay. those movies have never been watched. Ah. So back when we got it, my father was just learning what Blu-ray was. Ah. So he kept... He was very meticulous about uh, VHS and the heads, and he didn't like it if you played something on one VCR... And it was um, because, you know, if the heads are contaminated on one VCR, it can mm -hmm. contaminate the heads on the other. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me. I have no idea. I, I wasn't a big thing on it. <laughs> I ran my VCR into the ground. Um, and we'll talk about how I ran it into the ground with our, um, with mm -hmm. our Great Outdoors discussion, because that movie was part of what ran it into the ground. Yeah. Um, but me and a friend, I had gotten it for him for Father's Day. Mm -hmm. So me and a friend of mine at the time, we decided, let's take a look at the first movie since we hadn't watched it before. Hmm. And so we watched the first film. And then when I gave it to him, he was like, oh, this has been played on somebody else's player. It'll contaminate the heads on the DVD player. I'm like... That's not how it works. <laughs> uh, so he never put it into his DVD book. So I suppose he never checked movies out from the library. Nope. <laughs> so um, he got over that over after the after the years went by, but he never really played the others. Mm -hmm. So technically, the second and third movies on there have never been played. Mm -hmm. So they're brand new, pretty much. Uh, the first movie has only been played once. <laughs> so this is the only item I'm presenting tonight that's open, but technically it's all new stuff, huh? <laughs> Pretty much. Hmm. So my next is got all the rest of these are limited run games. Hmm. I made an order a while back, and the problem with limited run is that you make an order and then they print the order later. Hmm. So they send you the order usually months, almost half a year usually after. So finally I got my orders in. So I got three. So that's my three finals. So the first one is No More Heroes. Got a physical release. I liked this game a lot on the Wii. And I do have a digital copy on the Switch, but I don't trust digital. Hmm. And this is a game I want on physical because it is fun. It is a very un-Nintendo-like game. <laughs> you play this guy called Travis Touchdown. He is like a mercenary for hire. Very Deadpool-like in ways. 
and uh, he has uh, been lured by basically uh, this really hot French woman will sleep with him if he manages to kill all the the top assassins and put himself as the top assassin. Hmm. And it comes with this. It came with this card. This is my um, Lemonade Run card that I got for it. Mm -hmm. And this is my. Uh, this is the manual. They actually had a full color manual with this, which is also really a cool thing. I mean, it's interesting how the Switch has these cases that mm -hmm. are meant to have a manual inside them, and yet. <laughs> they don't have a manual <laughs> anymore because you know you can look it up online. But it is really cool. I like this game. It is a slight bit bloody. Mm. It hasn't aged the best, but it is still fun to play. I need to actually get it with the Joy Cons and start mm -hmm. playing it with that. Um, but the only time I played it right right now has been in portable mode. So I'm gonna have to sit down with it and just uh, play it, especially since the third game is coming out soon. No. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that has absolutely aged well, I've um, I've done a few upgrades over the last few days, or ordered a few mm -hmm. upgrades. Not all of them have arrived yet, but <clears throat> I did an I did a Kino Lorber order that I was going to build around a particular title. But because we are covering it next week on Inside Movies Galore, I wanted to be damn sure to have it in my hand. And well, you know, since I'm taking, since I've got Prime, and it was basically the same price, I went ahead and ordered it on Prime <laughs> and got it right away, of course. And that is my Blu-ray upgrade but also very much an upgrade in terms of special features and so much so forth of the classic mel brooks film space ball all right <laughs> yes so this is a very 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 nice upgrade this has i mean look at all the special features there it's great hmm. Got audio commentary by Mel Brooks. You got Spaceballs, the documentary, a tribute to John Candy. Watch Spaceballs in ludicrous speed. <laughs> all, this, all this great stuff. Uh, this is a classic film. Uh, definitely tune into our discussion. I think we'll have a lot of fun with this one. I think there's a lot of. Uh, and we're going to have at least one, possibly a couple of guest stars, because uh, so many people want to talk about this. Yeah. Movie. <laughs> but it is a classic. This was actually my introduction to both the Star Wars and Alien franchises. And for <laughs> years, I prefer, I still prefer it over most of them. And I know that's blasphemy to some, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, the theme song is one of the best villain songs <laughs> in movie history. So, you know, it's good times. And I'm, I'm really, I'm excited about this set. I hope I get to actually do some of the bonus features before the show, you know? <laughs> I got to look and see about that one I have, because I, I got mm -hmm. that one from Wet Movie 1 that mm -hmm. was a substantial upgrade on mine. Right. But, I, but not Blu-ray, just DVD. I'll have to look right. and see, because it has a ton of special features. Mm -hmm. Probably some of the same ones that are on there, but <laughs> right. I'll have to take a look myself, especially mm -hmm. since it's only one movie a week these days. Right. It's a little bit easier to dig in, though I don't have any special well, features in Great Outdoors. So. For some. Yeah. Oh, you it's don't prefer to dig copy. in for them than, than watching two movies a week. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, again, my situation here is I'm lucky just to get one done, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> But uh, as far as things go, it looks like it's going to be fun. At least it's, these are ones that I know that most people want to watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. So the other one is not going to be much of a surprise. It's No More Heroes 2. <laughs> I never got to play this. Um, it required the adapter for the for the Wii the, that allowed you to, you know, um, it was the... Uh, Increased sensor for the uh, for the controller, and I got that eventually. But 
by that time it just I just wasn't able to get the time to play on the, the system. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad to have it again. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, with it, you've got your um, you've got your card. Mm -hmm. And of course, your full color manual. Mm -hmm. Again, to Run Games is an amazing, mm -hmm. amazing service there. Mm -hmm. That's some cool okay, that's an interesting character there. Look at the head. <laughs> yeah. It has a very dark sense of humor, as you would expect mm -hmm. from a game like that. So, you know, it's kind of cool having these as part of the collection. Mm -hmm. I like having them as a physical addition. That's a lot of the thing about Limited Run. And why I usually do Limited Run on... This, even though Limited Run tends to put everything on the disc, which is also mm -hmm. cool, because sometimes you'll buy a physical copy and includes on the Switch, and if it's a regular manufacturer copy, they don't include the full game on the disc. Hmm. And that's just aggravating. But at least with Limited Run, I know that they're going to include the whole game. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't need an online connection to play this at all. And uh, that's really awesome. The uh, it's sad how much you need that these days. Yeah, it is so annoying when you buy a game and still have to download just to play the game. Oh yeah, it's like oh, it's so annoying. I mean, I don't even mean, buy physical games. I'm just talking about stuff on Steam. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, look at the Mega Man Legacy Collection. Uh, good right. example. Okay, the Mega Man games are. Like ninety percent of them are NES game. They're eight bit. Now Nintendo only put like the first half of the Legacy Collection on the disc. You can't tell me you cannot fit all those eight bit games on one disc. I am sorry. <laughs> Which is two two discs? <laughs> all right. So so far tonight we've seen the three stages. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Cheech and Chong, Porky's, and Mel Brooks. I sense a theme going, do you? <laughs> so, <Classics. laughs> I had to get something as a cart topper to make Spaceballs a worthy prime purchase. And I looked around and I found some stuff. And this movie fits absolutely, absolutely fits that theme. Definitely, this is absolutely a dumb comedy. No Oscar aspirations whatsoever. None of the above. Minari. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we got, this was also available cheaply not as cheaply as i would have preferred but because of our awards coming up and i know that uh some people that i know have an interest in seeing this i'd like to maximize the number of potential nominations we get for good quality films so i figured it was a timely purchase and you know these two together for I think it was like 35. That's not too bad. Not bad at all. But um, Minari was an excellent film. It did ultimately, what was it, one Oscar? I think. Yeah, I think it won one. It, it did get the supporting actress for Yu Jun Yun. Yeah. Um, I th it was up for several, as you can see up top there. This is a good film. I was a little underwhelmed by it the first time I saw it, and that was another reason I got it, was I kind of wanted to watch it again just to make sure I was giving it a fair shake. Um, same thing with Nomadland. I'm really hoping I can get those two watched this week, but we'll see. But uh, good, solid film. Definitely worth a look. And, um, yeah. <laughs> well... My last one is just kind of an offbeat purchase I made. Mm -hmm. Quantic Dream release called mm -hmm. Sea of Solitude. It looks kind of haunted. Mm -hmm. So 
it's about this um, person that's losing their humanity and they're trying to uh, claim it back. It's a very introspective <clears throat> tale. Hmm. This one does not have a nice manual. Instead, it comes with a sticker. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it still looks mm -hmm. nice. They still do a pretty good quality job. But Limited Run tends to do a lot of these uh, things. And again, Quantic Dream, I think, mm -hmm. put this one out themselves, but Limited Run sold it. Because mm. you can even see it at the bottom. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's still kind of cool. It's sort of like with that wonderful one-on-one. -on -one. I like having the small, the small company prints because these tend to go out of uh, print very quickly. And with indie games like this, you really do want to have them. You, you want to just hold them. It's good to have physical. And that's why I have that copy of Celeste. I cannot... I can't get past that place in Celeste because my ability to do these extremely hard platformers is crap. <laughs> but the music in Celeste and the feel is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I could beat this if I tried. Um, well, I I don't know. I'm, I'm playing the Yakuza series right now. Mm. And one game, like just any single game in that series is considered an, a... a big time suck. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like uh, playing... I guess the closest I can throw out there is GTA. <laughs> uh, mm. Very similar to that in the way that it goes. But uh, it's closer to Shenmue than GP GTA, but most people are more familiar with GTA. Mm -hmm. And that takes a long time in the single player. So imagine that, and I'm going to be doing that for seven games. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm probably going to take time before I do the spinoff, but uh, I will be playing those first seven, so it's going to be a long time. Hmm. But uh, this is going to be cool. I can't wait to dig into that in the future. Excellent. All right, so uh, <clears throat> those of you who follow this channel uh, are well aware that we like us some Criterion stuff, and that we like us the Criterion sale. And it has started. The July sale has started. <laughs> uh, for various reasons, I'm going to be very slow getting started on this one. I probably won't get too many this go round. Just I won't have the funding to do a whole lot with it. Right stuff doing their birthday sale at the same time doesn't help all that much. But um, as it turns out, there was one item more than anything else that I was like, I'm getting that. When the sale comes around, I'm freaking getting that. And that was the one thing more than anything else. And, you know, this may be some classy, artsy Asian stuff, but it's got nothing on this. I managed to find a copy, and there's a really fun story that I'll go into in a minute, but I got a copy of a really nice, nice collection, The World of Wong Kar Wai. Ah, yes. Which... Look, I mean, look at the. This is a solid set. Like, from the artwork and everything I'd seen, I was worried that this was going to be another thing, like one of those big kind of bookshelf, like um, tabletop, like the Godzilla or that Fellini one. You know, I couldn't really tell from the pictures, but this is a nice, solid set. And it's, it feels solid. <laughs> I love it. But as you can see here, ah, uh, yeah, not quite like the Godzilla set. Yeah. Um, this is actually more like the Agnes Varda one. Um, but as you can see here, you have 1988's As Tears Go By, 1990's Days of Being Wild, 1994's Chungking Express, 1995's Fallen Angels, 1997's Happy Together, 2000's In the Mood for Love, and 2004's 2046. 
Now, I'm personally annoyed that they decided to only include essentially his early works. They did not include all, I think, even from this time period. And, I, and there have been several since then that are not included. But this is a phenomenal director. He does some great, great, great work. It's dumbfounding to me that he has never won an Oscar. His films have been repeatedly nominated in the mood for love. I believe one foreign language feature. I think it did. I know it was nominated. Uh, I think Chungking Express was nominated. Maybe um, his films have been nominated in random ones. One that's not on here. The Grand Master was up for cinematography and costume design. But Wong Kar Wai himself has never won an Oscar. And I don't even think he's been nominated. I'd have to double check, but it's it's a crime. It really is. But anyway, this has a crap ton of special features. I don't even think that's a full listing. That's a pretty solid listing, though. Um, this is just, I mean, that all that right there is, tell, and most of these are rare films. Uh, most of these either have not been released here properly, or maybe they got like a DVD release or a VHS release or something. Uh, the Criterion had previously released In the Mood for Love, and I have it. I actually pre-ordered that one. Uh, but this, and they, pre, they have previously released Chunking Express, but I believe all the rest of these are new to the Criterion Collection. There are some short films included, that a couple of which have never had an American release. Um, for me, I'm upgrading Chunking Express and 2046, both of which I had on DVD. Uh, again, In the Mood for Love, I already had a Criterion Blu-ray, so I may end up keeping it or getting... I haven't made up my mind yet. But... Long story short, this is freaking awesome. But then there's a fun story behind it. You'll see that even though it's unopened and wrapped up, I got this from Barnes & Noble, there is nothing to indicate that it came from Barnes & Noble. So I went there and spent a good while perusing the shelves, looking for this, not finding it, looking for other things I might get, and I nearly got a couple others. I may go back for them. Finally, I went to the kiosk in the center, and I was like, hey, um, I'm looking for this. Can you help me find it? And she's like, oh, yeah, we have a copy. It's in the back, you know. Uh, the young lady helped me. Very, very, very cute, so that just made it even better. Uh -huh. She went back. She found it. She brought it out to me, this brand-new, un opened on tag it's like they brought it in and knew i was going to want it and so they <laughs> kept it for me in the back and then when i can and then when i was ready to pay the same young lady helped me which again she's really cute but also that saved me the trouble of explaining why i had one that was pressed. <laughs> So it was like the most fortuitous thing possible, and I loved it. And, uh, you know, you don't, I don't ever expect Barnes & Noble to give that level of service. <laughs> but anyway, that was a long story, but whatever. This is awesome. It's worth it. <laughs> so uh, you've, um, mm -hmm. uh, of course, I, you normally uh, – help us with our, um, uh, when talking about the uh, releases of Criterion, of course. Right. And there were two, actually. Okay. Uh, Mirror and, um, gosh, what was the other one? It was Mirror and... That came uh, out this bringing week? Up, yeah, Bringing Up Baby. Those are... Oh, ah, so, I forgot about that. Are you there... Mirror actually sounds fascinating, and uh, bringing up baby looks like you know it'd be a good one to grab. But uh, right. either of those on your on your thought on your uh, radar at this time around. So Mirror is by Andrei Tarkovsky. Uh -huh. It's a 
Russian film from 1975. I really don't know much about it, but it does look like one that I would... It definitely looks like one that would be on the list. Now, Bringing Up Baby is a Howard Hawks film that's considered a something of a classic. Uh, you got Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn, and many people consider this to be one of the great amusing films. Um, I have seen this. I think i it's really sad that i can't swear to it but <laughs> but it is a i'm almost sure i've seen it and i'm almost sure i enjoyed it <coughs> it's a highly regarded film regardless and both of these do actually have some decent bonus features so <coughs> they're definitely on my list I might even consider bringing up baby this time <clears throat> if if I can make it happen financially. I'm not holding my breath on that, but if not, November is a good likelihood. <laughs> now, I mean, I do have to admit, <clears throat> this one did have a hefty price. I mean, yeah, you know, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was actually cheaper than that Godzilla set. Um, so that was good. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So it sounds like we have some fun stuff overall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll see a couple of Criterion pop up as, as time goes by for me. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I picked up like three uh, recently. I'll be grabbing another one that came um, in uh, as an online order directly to Barnes and Noble because they had a copy at our local mm -hmm. tomorrow, and the rest will be coming in the mail. So. Hmm. A lot of cool stuff, a lot of upgrades, a lot of basic mm -hmm. DVD upgrades, <laughs> and one that I've been debating on for many years. So a lot of fun stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Of course, click that like button, subscribe, and share. But we'll, of course, see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.